during the past days I've talked about say solve it, solving components out of old electronic circuits and uh, I've made two videos the first one was about uh, say solving all these components this was that board and I've talked about uh, say uh, the coils the ferrite materials the components that are reusable etc etc and this was that board of which I have soldered everything sorry everything out uh, I talked about a uh, capacitor tester I will give the link in the text box that's a very usable capacitor tester uh, I did not talk about this tester that is an electrolytic capacitor tester that I will also give the link in the text box perhaps I want to say tell more about that in the future when you have say uh, solvage components it's always interesting say to see what the the, the value is for instance the value of this uh, small ring ferrite uh, material with some windings on it it must surely have a certain inductance and I'm doing this experiment I have not say uh, tested that before but let's see whether we can find out what the inductance is of this uh, green ring ferrite uh, material with of course that coil of approximately four windings on it by the way let me show when this uh, experiment fails at first the tester for that for these coils and it's here it is not very simple but it really works and here you see it in reality power supply oscillator etc etc and here the front and I have already made in the past a video about it so it's about the inductance meter that can measure between 10 micro Henry and 10 milli Henry so that's in a certain way a good range many coils go somewhat higher uh, you can see here quite a few of them here these are all a test course that I use for references etc well um, the idea was to connect this green coil here to the test circuit uh, and that green ring coil was out of that um, halogen lamp dimmer so I'm now going to connect uh, the, the purple windings to my crocodile clips let's see if we can get here an oscillation and when you know the oscillation frequency you know the inductance hope it will work put on the scope I have connected the, that tiny coil here and of course always very interesting does it oscillate does it want to oscillate on a certain frequency I don't see anything now switch the capacitors again also no oscillation here well that's a problem could mean of course that I made not the proper connections but anyway try the red coil perhaps the inductance is so low 
that my oscillator doesn't want to start. That could be. Again made two connections here, you can see it, here. Two of them to the red coil. Uh, let's see if we can get a, a, somewhere an oscillation. Well, we have an oscillation here. That's so good. It's 50 hertz, 50 kilohertz. I really don't know. Let's look here. This is the coil with that green. Um, I think it's 50 kilohertz. That's my ID. I put down now. Say I put down now the say the maximum amplification. Let's see what happens. Put up now that amplification here. And there's also a certain relation uh, to the measurements. Uh, all the measurements are on the maximum, um, like I say it in the schematic. Say on the maximum that the um, oscillator can give out. And that's set here by this potentiometer here. This one. And it is set magnitude, it's this potentiometer in the schematic. I hope my video will not be too long. If so, say, sorry for that. But we can surely conclude that this tiny coil here oscillates. Where does it oscillate? Well, I think on 50... I press again the outer set to see it again, 50 point zero 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 hertz. Well, let me look at the table. Of course, uh, like I told, uh, I've made a table. Uh, this is a table that I made. Here. So my ID is, and I have to retest that. I will surely give the results in the text box of this video. This is 51 um, kilo cycles here. The capacitor is 1000 picofarad uh, parallel to that coil. And let's see what what I've done here. 1000 picofarad, switch it now to 1000 picofarad. I don't see any difference by the way. Strange. Uh, position 2, 1000 picofarad, switch to position 2. And so I can conclude, could conclude, that this coil is 10 milli Henry. Let's do another experiment, because, well, could be that this is more or less nonsense. This is, uh, for instance, 56 macro Henry. Connect it now to the oscillator. Well, it still oscillates. That's very, very strange. It, it also oscillates when there is no coil paralleled. Well, okay, could be. And now the uh, 56 micro Henry. It also doesn't change. Well, that's, I think, not good for to demonstrate anyway. Well, this is okay. Here we see an enormous oscillation. 
absolutely sure that this is reliable. Let's set the time base. Uh, well, uh, perhaps I've made it in such a way that it also oscillates when there is no coil connected. But anyway, sorry for that. Now I disconnect that coil of uh, 56 micro Henry. Now I connect it again. We see a good waveform on 1.05 megahertz. That's absolutely sure. 1.05 megahertz. Well, that coil, 1.05, was the parallel capacitor of 1000 picofarad here. Switch to position 1. Must be 56 here, 56 micro Henry. So, that's okay. I will try to give more demonstrations. I think that the Q, the quality factor of this green rain coil was not enough. Anyway, a too high frequency. Anyway, uh, well, uh, let's see what another uh, capacitor can, sorry, another coil, unknown coil can bring us. This is 10 milli Henry here. I've tested it of course and now I'm connecting it to the oscillator. I don't see anything at this moment. Well, let's see. Well, here is an oscillation. It's quite weak, but anyway. Uh, so, perhaps you can think, well, this is not convincing, uh, I don't believe what you say, what you say, etc, etc. Uh, make the circuit, test your coils and make a, uh, a table for yourself. That's my ID. Uh, this coil now connected is 10 milli Henry. It is on 51 kilohertz in the oscillator circuit. This is the oscillator again. Uh, let's let's read uh, read the frequency 51 kilohertz. Where what is then in that case the uh, the inductance 10 milli Henry? Well, that does fit. Here is 10 milli Henry, and uh, perhaps it's not very clear, but let me try say for demo purposes such a coil this one it was salvaged out of that old um, halogen lamp electronic transformer I have of course to search where the yeah well okay so this is perhaps a convincing demo this is that uh, transformer out of the halogen lamp here. The halogen lamp circuit. Let me show again the box here. It was mounted inside here. And I've connected now to one part of the coil, my tester, this tester. And we read now 50. Uh, 50 kilohertz that means that uh, this coil that's now connected here has an inductance of 10 milli Henry thanks for watching my camera will stop suddenly uh, again the schematic perhaps interesting to show again thanks for watching It surely works. You can surely make your own conclusions, make your own, uh, say, frequency table related to the inductance and, uh, say, the circuit is in fact not very complicated, but I want to try to make an other circuit that is more easy to uh, to make, though I have to say 
that making a broadband oscillator uh, for low frequencies and high frequencies and with low I mean approximately 500 kilocycles and with high I mean approximately 10 megacycles is not not very easy and that's surely the reason why I've made this circuit in the past a few years ago in this way with two field effect transistors. It surely can work. And of course you have to make your own table where there is a direct relation between the inductance and the frequency.